Shipping containers are the unsung heroes of the global economy. These massive steel boxes carry goods to and from ports all around the world. But before they are loaded onto a ship and sent to their final destination, they're sorted at the port, a process far easier said than done. This is due in part to the size of each container. Standard lengths for shipping containers can come up to over 50 feet in length, with gross weights of over 60,000 pounds at maximum load. Highly trained operators have numerous tools available for lifting and moving containers within a port. In a typical working day, forklifts, cranes, and other specialized equipment are utilized with the utmost precision. However, this is only one small part of the process of sorting containers. Before anything, workers have to carefully inspect a container when it comes in. Usually the first thing they check is the CSC plate affixed to each container. The plate contains a detailed list of the container's specifications, like its weight when empty and its maximum gross weight. The CSC plate also lists a container's maximum stacking weight. Despite their formidable looks, these containers aren't invincible. As containers are typically sorted in stacks, it's important to be mindful of their physical limitations. A container can only carry a set amount of weight before it crumbles beneath a stack, destroying its precious cargo in the process. Once this information has been verified, containers are inspected both externally and internally for any structural damage. While cracks, dents, or rust are obvious red flags, a vigilant port worker will also check a container's subflooring and its corners for damage. If everything looks good, the shipping container will be brought to the appropriate area of the port, where containers are sorted by weight, type, and destination. At this point, stacking can begin in earnest. The corners of a shipping container are a crucial element of this process. They feature holes or posts that workers line up, allowing them to fit together snugly. With many containers carrying cargo upwards of $1 million in retail value, there's a strong economic incentive for being able to fit even just one extra container on a port. Once a stack is lined up, twist locks are used to secure containers into place. On 20-foot containers, these are located at the corners. For larger containers, twist locks can also be installed to line them up with a smaller 20-foot container below. If the size difference is too great, they can also be used to join smaller containers together horizontally, allowing them to support larger containers on top. You'll never see a larger container supporting a smaller one, though. Stacking a smaller container on top of a larger one can potentially crush or damage the larger container due to the uneven distribution of weight. Lashing rods and wires are also used to minimize the lateral movement of stacks once they're in transit. As bigger ships continue to be rolled out, the safe number of containers in a stack grows higher, making measures more important than ever. But even with all these measures, over 1,000 containers fall overboard in transit each year on average. This trend is likely to continue due to the steady rise in demand for consumer goods. This places a significant amount of pressure on the global shipping industry. Container ships have to go on more voyages per year or at near maximum capacity just to keep up with the demand. With each individual ship going on more voyages, the risk of running into trouble increases. Not even the most advanced stacking procedures could have saved the 4,382 containers lost in the Indian Ocean when the Mall Comfort struck a bad patch of weather and proceeded to sink in 2013. At least nobody got hurt. Thankfully, incidents like these are an extreme statistical outlier millions upon millions of containers still regularly make their way across the world each year. And it all starts with them being carefully sorted and managed at ports.